All right, so we did the intro to the 1966 Batman TV show. We've never done animation before, but we're kicking off Batman month, and this is the first one up, so let's take a look at how we did it. Bringing a cartoon to life is different. We've never done anything like that before. So it's lots of bright colors and solid backgrounds. So we had to make the costumes for Batman. We start with a solid base of kind of a grayish blue. And I knew that this was gonna be played by our friend Matt. He was in our Terminator scene. He's a pretty big burly guy and he's got a nice strong jaw and we thought he'd make a really good Batman. We got clothes that fit him pretty tightly. We've got the gloves. Those are awesome. And I used just some leather gloves. And then for the longer part that sticks out, I found some leather boots that were women's boots and I just cut the tops of the boots off, taped them to the glove for an extension, and then added on little cardboard spikes. Bat gloves. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Got some blue fabric, made the cape. It's interesting in this animated intro, it looks like the front of his face and his mask is actually like black. It might just be shadow or the way they drew it. But the thing here to keep in mind is that we're matching the animated costumes, not necessarily the live action costumes from the live action show. They're actually kind of different. So it's black up front. So it's just a black sleeve that we kind of just put over, cut some eyes, drew the eyebrows. And then the cowl was just the blue fabric from the cape. Put that on there, got the ears, and then instead of doing separate undies for Batman, I just decided to paint the black right on the blue pants. And then for the one shot where you do see his boots, we just used some bits of the fabric and just taped it to his legs, and it kind of looks like boots. And then Batman has a yellow utility belt, so that's just a regular belt that we painted yellow and just drew some of the details on. Oh, and of course the Batman logo, which we just drew and taped to Matt's chest. Yep. Dang, that's awesome. Now I play Robin in this one, which we thought was going to be pretty funny since Matt's so tall and I'm so tiny. Started with a green t-shirt, drew some lines on there like they have in the cartoon, and then used a red polo shirt on top that I just cut the sleeves off of. And then I just painted the collar yellow. I had some trouble with that actually. I tried just spray painting yellow onto the collar, but it wasn't really taking to the fabric and it didn't look right. So I ended up putting tape on the collar first and then painted on top of the tape because it's much more vibrant that way draw some of the little buckles and details, make the logo, glue that on there, and then he's got a yellow cape, that's just some yellow fabric. He's got a quick little black mask that you just tie it on. And then in one shot, you do see his full body. So I went with some little green short shorts and I borrowed those from my wife and um, quite exposed in those. I think in the live action version, Robin wears tights, but it looks in this animated one like it's just his arms are flesh and his legs are flesh. So I just went bare legs for that one. Pulled up those little jogging shorts and uh, just went for it. Oh, and then his belt, it's painted yellow again, like Batman's, but it looks like Robin's shirt kind of hangs out in a certain way. So I actually attached the red fabric directly to the belt. So when I put it on, it would go in the right place. We really look like the real deal running around the neighborhood. There's lots of colorful backgrounds in this one, so I just went downtown to the fabric district and bought all kinds of cheap fabric, as much as I could get for each color. We've got red, orange, blue, purple, green, all really big, and we just hang them up and stand in front of it. The first big shot of Batman and Robin running, we decided to just run in place. For that one, we really wanted the capes to be flowing and up in the air like how they have it in the cartoon, so we just got some big gauged wire and just bent the shape and kind of just attached the capes and then hung the capes from the ceiling. So they're just kind of dangling there behind us, and then the capes come down and attached to our costume. So that's pretty much how that shot worked. All right, a bunch of these shots now are of Batman or Robin punching bad guys. So instead of doing the whole motion, we kind of went with jump cuts. So it still has like that animated look to it. So we're holding a pose and then we're holding the next pose and then it kind of cuts together in a cool way. Of course, Batman has the big classic colorful pow, zop, biff, whatever. We just made those out of cardboard. So that way at the right moment, we could just have somebody hold it up. All right, thanks guys. One of the really complicated shots was when Batman punches a guy, the big cardboard Zock appears, and then Robin slides in, they shake hands, and then there's supposed to be this big thing where his cape kind of billows out in this big giant way. And we were gonna hold his cape up with some wire, but we realized that there wasn't really enough fabric left for 
that. It wasn't big enough. So we ended up going with a clever solution, which was using the back of the big bat logo, which we're going to see in a second, and just painted it blue and black and use that as his cape that billows up. So that way, when it dissolves to the next thing, which is the Batman logo, it all kind of matches up. Ben made this thing. It's really huge. Rather than just drawing that as a separate thing, it's full size and it's live action. So Matt puts his head there and just holds up the logo and it looks really awesome. For the shots where we actually have some text on screen, we actually cut out paper text and connected it with some wires and then taped it to Matt's forehead. For Robin's, the tape wasn't working because the way it was sitting on my hair, so we just held it up with some wire, but essentially it's the same idea. Real text right there in camera. Another shot that was really cool that we built some life-size elements for was Batman and Robin standing together, punching some guys. In this one, the villains in the background are just kind of a solid like aqua color, so we made that out of cardboard and then we just stand in front of it. This is one of those that's just kind of like holding still and then cutting to the next pose and it looks really cool on camera. It's all so colorful. It's like bringing a cartoon to life. There's a couple big group shots. You've got all the villains lining up to parade past the camera and so we just made a bunch of random costumes for that. We've got a weird mad scientist guy. He's got crazy orange hair, so I just spray painted one of our wigs and our beards bright orange and put on a lab coat. Then we've got weird lizard guy. That was just a uh, leftover ski mask that was from our kick-ass scene, and I just put some yellow tape down the middle. Then we've got classic mobster guy. That's just like an overcoat and a tan fedora. And then we've got uh, another just random thug. He's got like a blue cap and a blue shirt. But then behind them, for the second row of bad guys, we ended up making full-size cardboard cutouts of the other bad guys. So it's kind of now a weird mix of like drawings and live action. Ben drew these really huge on cardboard, cut them out, got all the lines, spray painted it tan, and then everyone just held on to this thing. So as they shuffle past the camera, they could just carry it with them. So we've got our two rows of bad guys. We got that one. All right, that's a wrap on tan, guys. It only took six hours to make. Yeah. <laughs> now the next group got some of the super villains in it, people that actually recognized. We've got Joker. Since we're only seeing people from the side, we didn't even have time to do the full makeup. So we just did half of the face. So we got half Joker, and then that's just a black wig that we spray painted green, put on a green coat for that. And then we've got Penguin. So that was a top hat, the little monocle that we just made out of some wire. <laughs> then for the long nose, I just cut off a finger from a latex glove. It didn't really match the skin tone exactly, but you know, they go by pretty fast. And so we just glued that on to our friend Casey's nose and it kind of looked like Penguin's nose. And then we've got plastic bag guy everybody's favorite super villain. So that was just literally a plastic bag with eye holes cut in it. So now behind the live action group, we've got the other cardboard group. Now this is a huge group of cardboard cutouts. Again, Ben made all of these by hand. He just cut them all out and then painted them blue, drew all the line work on there. Oh, we even have Catwoman in there. She's blue with everybody else. So if you look close, you can see Catwoman. And then there's even another group behind those, which is all in silhouette. So it's kind of two layers. This thing was about 10 or 12 feet long. It took up the whole room and it barely fit in my house and so everybody who was in costume had to carry this thing and then one by one as they were passing and they were off screen each person had like their own task so at the beginning of the shot I'm holding all the POW signs so I just like drop one in take it out lift another one in drop it lift another one in so those happen in the front of the line we had Matt once he passes as his goon he runs around and gets ready to carry another element for later we'll see that in a second then we have Bosco he runs around the back of the thing to grab the end because it's so heavy and floppy that he's just supporting the weight of the end Casey is next in line he just continues carrying it into the bedroom so that it keeps going straight and then Ben once he's past camera what you don't see is he actually has shoes on his hands because he immediately runs around, sits down on a skateboard with a toolbox on it so that he can, at the right moment, go past the camera with these feet hands because it looks like two feet go by and it looks like legs, but it's really his arms. And then immediately after the feet, this awesome painted Joker goes by on a stick that Matt holds. And then at the very end, I pick up the other little pieces of cardboard, which is a silhouette of people and then a cardboard cutout of people. And I slide those by. So all that stuff has to happen in one shot and the timing has to be right. And it was difficult. So that's how we did our Batman animated TV intro. If you have any other questions, let me know in the comments and stay tuned every Tuesday for new homemade movies. And this month is all Batman month. We've got Tim Burton's Batman. We've got The Dark Knight, The Dark Knight Rises. So stay tuned for all of that. <laughs>
trying to make a wreck out of the house, if you haven't noticed.